thanks. And yeah, I'm Sophia. And if anyone in the back don't hear me, because I thought we had some construction maybe out here, please come closer. Or let me know and I'll shout. So today, yeah, wild dreams. And first I just want to say like, I'm happy to be here and meet all of you. I know we all are like creative people. I think it would be interesting to have a coffee with like everyone in here and just hear about what you're doing. So I'm going to start to introduce myself five years ago. And today I'm going to show you a lot about my old iPhone footage because I had a little incident. I dropped my hard drive on the floor last week. And hopefully, like, we can repair it, but I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, I thought it was fun to show you, like, my life before I was a photographer and the journey into it. So this is me, my best friend Nikki. This is the house I lived in. I lived in Canada at that time. And I was skiing all the time, but as you see, like, I was not a ski photographer, but I loved skiing and I was just like, I worked three days a week as a nanny for those two kids and two other kids as well. I had four kids. And then I would just spend time out in the mountain like as much as I could. And I was just so inspired, like these are also some photos before my photography career, but what we did. And I was just inspired by all the people who lived for their passion and made a career around their lives and like what they loved doing. And this was my dream list and I brought it here today. Is there anyone here like, do you guys have a dream list? Like actually a list, raise your hand if you have. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I had. It was running my own business, work with something I enjoyed, work with something creative, have a great work community, have my own office, I don't know what that just felt important, and grow as human every day at work. And I wanted to work in the skiing and outdoor industry. And I am Introducing myself today. I'm happy I'm here. I am working as a ski photographer, videographer, and I am running my own business. And yeah, basically some stuff came true. And I'll tell you now a little bit on the journey, how I went from like those iPhone footage to actually made it into my career. And this is just some photos I found on my phone when I'm out working, like I'm flying drone, take photos, making videos. Yeah, can you all see the screen even here? Uh, I think what's important to talk about is not like, this is the question I get most, how much does your camera co cost? Or like, <laughs> how much is your drone? Like I was in Stockholm last week filming, and like every day, at least five people ask me like, how much does your drone cost? Like, that's not, you don't need to know that when you're, if you want to be a photographer. And I'm not going to talk about what school I went to, not so much. I'm going to talk about having a supportive community. And we have it here. It's great. Like, you guys should use this like creative community. It's important. And work on your fear muscles. And I'm doing it right now. I'm not a speaker, but it's fun being here. So supportive community and fear. So let's start with supportive community. And let's just get my speak back. So this was my supportive community when I started and they're not my kids. That was the nanny uh, family that I was working with. And this family just believed in me and my dreams so much. They saw my passion for the outdoor life, for taking photos. I took all the photos with my phone and they just believed in my dreams. And as I said, I was living in Canada and I found this little media and marketing school in the town that I lived with in. But as you know, like school is not free in 
North America. It was super expensive. But me and my friend Nikki, we always like, I don't know, we made stuff possible. So we got them to start to collaborate with CSN so that I could take a huge study loan to go to this school. So my parents were not happy, but my nanny family, they believed in me and my friends. So I went. And this is just some random photos that I'm going to talk about. This is Nikki, my most supportive friend and Karen. And this is our house. I don't know if you can see it, but we just started to film everything around us. Like we filmed our friends that we live with. We just brought the camera up the mountain and we didn't have no money to buy good gears. This, I don't know if you know what it is, is Steadicam. So you get stable videos, but we made our own out of some wood and put it on like, I don't know, a heavy weight and I used a skateboard so we could roll it. And we just, I don't know, we had a lot of fun ideas. Just gonna find what side I was to. So, like I said, we just brought the camera anywhere and we started to reach out to like all the ski magazines, magazines we could find. We reached out to the biggest like ski events we could find and we just asked, hi, can we come and film? Hi, can we come and take photos? And usually like everyone said yes. And we entered a big ski movie competition without knowing how to make, I don't know, without knowing how to film, but we just made it possible in some way. We just went there and it went really well. And still we used like, my friend Nikki's old camera from like 2010 and it was shaky and I'm not gonna show you the footage from that video, but anyway, it was fun. But I also want to share a bit. Oh yeah, this is some photos as well. And it's a screenshot from my website because I didn't have my hard drive. So, but that's some photos from that time. And like, we just, yeah, had fun. But, like you know, life is just not about happy moments. And like, just as everything started to go really well, I tore my ACL really bad and my knee. And I couldn't like ski anymore. And the doctor told me that I would never ski again. And I also started to get really sick and dizzy and I didn't know why and I went to the doctor and they were like we can't like we don't understand why are you like, getting so sick all the time and why do you get dizzy and I had huge anxiety about my visa running out in Canada because I had lived there for a couple of years and it was almost impossible to get a new one so I finally had to leave like the place I loved my supportive nanny family, my best friend, it's the start of my photo, video career, my boyfriend at that time, and I went back to Sweden, to Gothenburg. And I went to Lund, because I thought studying Lund sounds fun. I was there for like four days, and then I quit, because that was not for me. And I went back here to Gothenburg again, and I, like, I just started to get more sick and more dizzy, and I didn't know why. I had to move back to my parents' place. I had to just lay in a dark room and like I couldn't listen to anything or watch anything because I was just so tired, like exhausted all the time. And I did that for a month after month and I went to the doctors and they were like, no, we can't find anything. Like, do you just in Bilar de Huel? <laughs> like this is, we can't like, I don't know, find anything. And then finally, they found I had a small vision problem that I've been going around with for my whole life. And my body was just exhausted about compensant for this vision problem. So I had an eye surgery and there are some nice photos here as well from that. And like I immediately got better and I got my life back. But I'm not gonna talk more about that now. But anyway, when I yeah, got better, I did some, I went back to business school here in Gothenburg and film school at the same time, because I couldn't decide which one I wanted to go to. And I did a year of that and, and got an internship. I got 
a job where I did an internship as a video producer, and it was fun, but it was still not my dream. My dream was like, I don't know, doing my own thing and get these outdoor jobs, getting back, being outdoors. And I also saw this like hole in the market for like short productions, you know, all this content marketing. And there was like a change going from this big video productions for advertisements to being able to make short, quick content. And I thought like, I'm going to work with that and I'm going to be a freelance. And I just started freelancing and reached out to like everyone I knew and it went really well and that's what I'm here. But I want to mention like the supportive community that I had from like my nanny family and my friends when I started, that was what led me to do this today. And I said before that fear was something that I have been thinking about a lot. So I'm gonna just talk a little bit about fear as well. And get to know yourself and know what fear that is relevant and what's irrelevant has been like, I don't know, a game changer for me. Is there anyone in here who are afraid of either spiders, claustrophobia, heights, or maybe calling a new client, speak in front of people, raise your hand if there's anything, and they're all like, I don't know, I would say irrelevant fear. And the best school I had for that was backcountry skiing or surfing or biking when I was out in nature. Because I had to work with my fear all the time. Because I was super, I am still super scared of heights. Like, I get scared every time I'm standing on a mountain. And I was skiing all the time, and I love that. So every day I had to work and like, is it the heights that I'm afraid of? Or is it actually like an avalanche risk here? I had to be like, I don't know, what's the real fear and what is irrelevant? And I apply that today in my business as well. Like, you know, networking can be super scary, calling a new client, showing, is there anyone in here who have their own business? Yeah, you know, showing your website for the first time to someone and be like, yeah, this is me, like, and not feel judged. That's, I don't know, that's all hard stuff. But today I'm not scared for networking. I'm not scared of like showing my website because I've been working on my fear so much, like active every day. So yeah, I just want to like, that's two things that have led me here today. Like I've really been working on my fear. Like as I said before, I'm not a professional speaker, but I thought it was a fun thing to come here and just tell my story and yeah show that just go out and do stuff and don't take it too serious. So my way, like I said, was the supportive community and the fear. So I really want to like encourage everyone to think more about the community that you have and like reach out to someone who maybe needs your help or just tell someone that they're doing a good job. Maybe tell your friend here today that like they're actually doing a good job because that's so much more important than you think. And identify your fear. Is it like, are you scared of, I don't know, showing people what you're doing, like your job? Work on that active every day. And also like, this is my contact information. If anyone, I don't know, just want to talk or have a coffee or anything, I think, yeah, like it's great to be here. I'm looking forward to be here, looking for the next person here. And yeah, thanks so much for me.